What we want to do is, is take a step back and try to understand, well, how did we get here? Because what we're living in now is the what, what we want to know is the how. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Change and the Market, your mindful guide to the ever-changing real estate world. My name is Peyton Beck, and I'm here at Masiello HQ. And joined with me, as always, is Chris Masiello, uh, author, CEO, and football extraordinaire. Chris, how are you today? Good morning, Peyton. Good to be with you. Good to be with everybody. You played yeah. football, right? Uh, it was a long time ago. Okay, so, I thought so. I pulled that out I of think, my head. But. Yeah, so, yeah, but uh, yeah, a long time ago. A long time ago, back when you were younger, Chris, this is a perfect transition to what we're going to talk about today. Yeah. Hey, excellent. Yeah. Yes, there you go. And just for the audience, uh, I've got some construction work going on in the, the street outside of my window. So if you if you hear some noise, that's what it is. Yeah, so I thought what we would talk about uh, today, it was not football, um, is it, talk about how demographics are really impacting the housing market with an eye on understanding the the long-term implications of the demographics and really how how they're gonna be affecting the housing market for many, really many years to come. And I'm gonna go back to the end of the Second World War, which was probably the last time that we saw um, demographics uh, impact housing this significantly. So at the end of the Second World War, there were 16 million men and women in uh, the armed forces. And they, 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 people traveled all over the country, of course, you know, for deployments, they, care, they traveled all over the world. You know, some of you might've lived in New Hampshire and been deployed in San Diego in the Navy and then stay there, right? And the last really huge shift we had with demographics was really after the Second World War, when that's when subdivisions became popular, like subdivisions the way we know them, like track housing. Uh, you know, people went to college because they had the GI Bill. That's that's how the GI Bill got started. Um, and that's where the baby boomers came from. They're, the baby boom was after the Second World War, uh, as these returning uh, servicemen and women were settling down. So how does that impact where we are today? So the baby boomers have been, um, and baby boomers are like 1944, I think, to like 1963. Um, I'm, a, I'm a 62, so I'm like the second to last year of the baby boomers. And so that group right now, um, well, that group historically has, had been the largest demographic group in, in the country. Right now, it, of course, a lot of it's aging out, um, except, you know, yours truly. Uh, a lot of it's aging out, and um, but there's about 55 million baby boomers. There's also now 62 million millennials that are all in house buying, you know, needing housing age. And there is this kind of a, assumption about the millennials that millennials would not be very um, house friendly. Um, and that's proven to be completely wrong. It just can I, the opposite. Can I ask why that is? You know, well, I think fundamentally it was kind of a misunderstanding of human nature. I, I, I never understood why why demographers why they would why why there is this in and at a social science level why people were saying or you know prognosticating that that millennials. Um, you know, would not be um, very house friendly, you know, that they want to live in apartments or be urban dwellers and things like that. But the reality of it is, is that the millennials were brought up by the baby boomers who were who were um, housing friendly. They liked neighborhoods, they liked community, they liked backyards with swings. That's how they were brought up. And that's exactly what's happened. And, and so so you have the, the the baby boomers, 55 million, and you have the millennials, okay, 62 million. Then you also have the Gen um, uh, the Gen Z and the Gen X. So Gen X are people that were born 65 to 81, and then the um, you know the the Gen Z are you know the 1990s to the you know, to the you know 2010. Now, all of these groups, all four of these demographic groups are all in the housing market together, okay? And when you add it all up, it's about 200 million people that need housing. Well, there's only 350 million people in the country, right? 
And, and so when we when we take a look at the amount of like the the pressure that is on the existing housing supply, the pressure is because of the demographics. Then you layer in, then you layer in the fact that that um, we're we're probably ten years behind in new home production, and so those fundamentally. Uh, those dynamics fundamentally is really what's creating uh, the, the housing shortage that we're seeing today. And, and, and so when we really talk about housing, this is the reason why we've got this housing crunch, okay, is that when you talk about demographic trends, well, demographic trends, we're talking about a demographic trend that's affecting 2023 that was started in the 40s. Think about it for a minute, right? It's a 75-year-old, right, trend. Um, and then, uh, then you talk about you know housing starts. Well, housing starts have been off since 2005, 2006. So, so these are really long-term trends. So, when we talk about the housing market and the housing cycle that we have today, it's one of the reasons why, why you know we we're embracing it as this is what we have, and we're probably going to have some version of this for some time. So, you know, let's set about making it work. Let's not set about complaining about it or or lamenting it because nothing we can do about it. So, right. So let, let's figure out how to how to make it work. Yeah, I guess my first, I, I do have to ask because I am. I think we have set, we have, it's established I'm Generation Y. Is that correct? That's what is decided. Well, you're Generation Z. Oh, I'm Z. Okay. Uh, the what what are there any stereotypes developed around those generations other than the obvious ones? More towards housing. No, I, I mean. I, I think the demographers, demographers made made uh, you know such a bad call on the millennials that I don't think I don't I don't think anyone's willing to comment anymore. Respect, I understand. No, it's probably a safe bet. And the reality of it is, people need housing. I, I I always just think the whole conversation is kind of you know misplaced. So that's awesome information, Chris. I I, I guess my question is, what advice do you have for all of us whenever we're dealing with a trend that is, has so much momentum behind it? And how do we go about, you know, making the most of it? You know, many of you know, I'm, I'm a history enthusiast, right? Which is probably code for a history nerd. And, and, and but I'm a firm believer that, that how do you know where you're going if you don't know where you've been? And, and so whatever moment in time that we're in is a moment in time that didn't start this moment. It started at another point in time. And so I think that when we're in times of great change or times of great impact, you know what what we want to do is is take a step back you know move into objectivity and try to understand well how did we get here because because what we're living in now is the what what we want to know is the how and once you put the the how and the what together well then all of a sudden you then you have kind of a full picture and so you know i think that was one of the reasons why i wanted to talk about this because you know how do we demystify the environment that we're in and we only demystify it by kind of looking back in time to understand how we got here. Yeah, I love that. I think that makes a lot of sense. Well, that'll do it for us today on Change in the Market. As always, uh, please like and subscribe on whatever platform you're following on. And if you have any questions or things you want us to tackle in the future, feel free to leave a comment below uh, and we'll, we'll see those and we'll address those. Um, but until then, uh, my name is Peyton Beck. This is Mr. Chris Masiello, and we will see you next week. All right, folks, have a great week. Take care. My name is Peyton Beck. I'm here at Moss Yellow HQ. And with me, as always, is author extraordinaire. You're shoot. Um, panicked. I'll try again.